Now, welcome along to Calling It. I'm in the call. So Celtic found out who their Group H opponents are going to be. It's going to be AC Milan, it's going to be Lille, and it's going to be Spard Prague. Pretty difficult group considering Celtic were miraculously in part one for the Europa League draw. In this video, I'm going to look ahead to that group stage. I'm going to look at Celtic's game against St. Johnson this weekend. And I'm also going to look at some of the key points from their win over Sarajevo on Thursday night. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit that subscribe button now and you can get notified for any video over the course of the season. I will be doing loads of Celtic videos over the course of the season. So if you're interested in that, it is well worth your time subscribing. So we'll start with the win against Sarajevo in the playoff round on Thursday night. I know a lot of people weren't overly pleased with the performance, but Celtic did get through. Odds and Edward scored the only goal the night, and they are through to the Europa League, which ultimately is the only thing that really matters. Neil Lennon said after the game it was a good performance. I thought it was a mediocre to okay performance the first half. Celtic looked sluggish, they looked slow, and they didn't really create many chances. They only had one shot on target altogether in the first half. They didn't really cause Sarajevo any problems one bonus is Sarajevo didn't cause Celtic any problems either so the first half was pretty boring I'm not sure if anybody was watching it or how many of you were able to find a stream I was watching it on what seemed like a potato uh, at work because I was work uh, I was watching it on a stream and it wasn't the best stream in the world but that didn't change the fact that Celtic didn't play well in the first half at all. The second half, I thought they were much better. They moved the ball a lot quicker. They were obviously had a different mindset going into that second half. They were much quicker on the ball. There was much more movement when Celtic got into the final third. I, it took a while to break down Sarajevo, but Sarajevo are a fairly decent side, so that's probably why. But anyway, the performance doesn't really matter when it comes to the playoffs. What matters, especially now when the playoffs were just one game and you didn't have that second leg to fall back on, the performance didn't really matter. It doesn't really come into it. The result is all that's important. And Celtic got the result that they needed to go through into the into the Europa League group stages. And what an amazing couple of minutes in the group stages when you're looking at Celtic's potential lineups, potential pots. They went from potentially in pot three to pot one in the space of a couple of goals. They needed Tottenham to score four goals. Tottenham scored seven goals. They needed AC Milan to win. And AC Milan almost were put out in this uh, in the playoff rounds against a Portuguese side that really took them by surprise so it's it, we would have preferred to get the Portuguese outfit than AC Milan but uh, Celtic into pot one and they were drawn out in uh, group H with uh, AC Milan with Lille and with Sparta Prague so we'll start with AC Milan pretty pretty decent side Slatan and Ibrahimovic up front they will have enough in their arsenal to cause Celtic a lot of trouble but I think uh, if you look at the say the Celtic side that played against AC Milan in I think it was 07 or 06 in Celtic Park when they scored a last minute corner and that was the team with Ronaldinho, it was the team of Pirlo and it was one of those magical Celtic nights in, in Parkhead. It's, we, Celtic don't have the team that they had then but neither do AC Milan. That's I think that's the mindset you need to go into this game with. AC Milan <clears throat> aren't really a Champions League side anymore, they're very much a Europa League side. They actually play Chamark Rovers. Uh, the Irish side uh, this year in the playoffs of the Champions League or the playoffs of the Europa League rather um, and they, they they dispatched of them e easily enough but they actually they weren't they weren't amazing like they were they were a pretty decent side and they will cause Celtic trouble no no doubt about that but I definitely do think they are beatable as well and then you're looking at Lille Lille are a fairly decent outfit in fairness to them they have been pretty solid over the last couple of years they're uh, they're the the thing about Lilo is that I think you can get you can definitely get at them defensively. They're not the best, so I think that's a a, a fixture that Celtic can look at that they can definitely pick up points. And then Sparta Prague, Sparta Prague is the one that I'd be worried about the away fixture because it's tough. It's a tough place to go. And apart from that, I think Celtic are a better side than Sparta Prague overall. If you look at the uh, the rankings and if you look at just the, the, the how good this two sides have done in Europe over the last couple of years, Celtic are definitely a better side than Sp Sparta Prague, but it's de Czech Republic is a really tough place to go at the best of times. Sparta Prague is a really, really tough place to go. So the away fixture, I'd be I have my slight concerns over uh, Celtic picking up points, but the home fixtures, I think Celtic can do really, really well here. And um, uh, especially against Alex Ace Milan, I think in the, they can take them by surprise. I do think they can pick up points against Lille and Sparta Prague at home I think is a fixture that Celtic should really be focusing on to pick up points in this uh, Europa League so overall I think it's a fairly decent um, decent draw for Celtic it's it's the group of death but it is something that Celtic are need to go they need to play against these teams if they want to get better so 
Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll get fans into the stadium. There's some murmurings that you might get a couple of thousand people in to these games by November. So that's the second round of games starting November 6th, I think. So hopefully we might actually get a couple of fixtures in. We might actually get over to a couple of games this season. So that would be absolutely brilliant if uh, if Celtic could have at least like maybe a couple of thousand people in Celtic Park. It's a lot better than having nobody at all. So really looking forward to that. I think it's a great group. And you want to be coming up against these best sides because the I don't know about anybody else, but the, those that qualifying round was fairly depressing considering every team had 10 men behind the ball for the entire game. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge, but I these, these are the nice, this is what you want to be in Europe for. So that's why, um, that's why I'm looking forward to this. A couple of changes coming up against St. Johnson this Sunday, I would imagine. Near Beaton is out injured. He's not going to feature. Chris Julian is back fit. He didn't come on. I was surprised El Ahmed came on instead of him. So obviously he wasn't fully fit for this game. So I'd imagine it's going to be between him and El Ahmed to start in a back three with uh, Shane Duffy and Chris Ryer. I think potentially we might see Jeremy Frimpong getting a bit of a rest because he played the full match uh, the, against Hibbs and he also played against um, Sarajevo then on Thursday night. And then I think Greg Taylor might get a bit of a rest in midfield, you're looking at Ryan Christie might get a little bit of a rest. I've given up on the fact that he's going to give Scott Brown a rest because it seems to be he's going to be playing every single game, week in, week out, regardless of what happens. So I'd say Scott Brown and McGregor will start again and then probably Albion Ejeti will start start up front instead of El Unisi. And potentially Kamala might get a start as well against St. Johnson. This is, a, this is a game that Celtic should be targeting as building on the momentum and building on uh, the good... <clears throat> the good run of form they've been on recently. The, again, it's what it's the Ferenc Varos uh, defeats is the only defeat this season. So you need to just keep building on and keep uh, keep the pressure on Rangers at the top of the table and keep keep firing away. And this ten in a row is not going to come uh, easily this year at all. Rangers are on a great run of form as well. That was a massive win for them against Galatasaray in the in the Europa League as well. So uh, you have to give them plaudits as well for for also like it's it's one thing that uh you don't want rangers to be doing well but in europe you kind of do want them to do, be doing a little bit better than usual because you want that uh, <clears throat> uefa coefficient to keep keep climbing for the scottish league and hopefully might start building a bit of a reputation in europe again even if it is for both sides playing in the europa league so celtic need to keep going need to keep um Keep this form going. I'll be in a jetty. I can imagine is going to get a couple of goals this weekend. That is my prediction for the weekend. What do you think? What do you think of the group overall? And what do you think of um, Celtic's, Celtic's opponents this weekend and going forward as well? Who do you think should start in that game? Let me know in the comments below. And subscribe to the channel if you want more. Again, if you subscribe to the channel, you will get notified for every video. So it is beneficial for you and for me if you subscribe to the channel. I'm Andy Call. has been calling it. Thanks for watching.